Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. The GOP is jam-packed with candidates in the race for Virginia's next governor, but there appears to be some confusion on how they're choosing their nominee. I'm Tim Harkman, and I'll have the story coming up. But first, after months of tightened restrictions, Governor Northam is scaling them back. And we do not want to risk our progress by easing restrictions too quickly. We'll break down what's changing and how it'll impact you. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 10 News at 6. I'm Lindsay Ward. I'm John Carlin. The restrictions that have become an everyday part of life will soon ease up. Today, the governor announced on March 1st, the stay-at-home order will be lifted. Alcohol sales can now end at midnight and entertainment venues can have more people. 10 News reporter Taj Simmons joins us now live from the Berkland Center to tell us how they plan to bring back the music. Taj? Well, John Lindsay, as you mentioned, Governor Northam is encouraging Virginians to get outside to reduce the risk of COVID-19 transmission. And that's why the Berglund Center parking lot, not the arena behind me, will become the place to see live entertainment in the near future. Starting on March 1st, all entertainment venues are still limited to a 30% capacity, but outdoor shows can now host up to 1,000 people starting on that date. I think the messages uh, for today, one, uh, we encourage everybody to get outdoors. Now, as I mentioned, the shows coming up at the Berglund Center will be where I'm standing. They're planning two concerts in the Berglund Center parking lot this spring, with more likely on the way if restrictions continue as they are. Venue operators believe Northam's decision to increase capacity is a good sign for the regular shows we used to know returning by the end of the year. Live entertainment is very important, but you know, so is just getting back to normal life. So I think Governor Northam loosening up the restriction on outdoor shows gives us kind of that beacon of hope that things are going to get back to better. While outdoor venues now have a 1,000 person cap under that 30% capacity rule, indoor venues remain at the previous limit of 250 people. Now, Governor Northam's push to gain outside also extended to regular gatherings. He increased the limit on those from 10 people to 25. For now, reporting live in Roanoke, Taj Simmons, 10 News working for you. And those restrictions are able to be relaxed thanks to fewer cases and more vaccinations, but getting vaccinated is not always easy. A Roanoke man received his first dose last week at CVS, but tonight the pharmacy says he may never get his second one. He was on the waiting list for an appointment, and last Wednesday CVS called him with a leftover vaccine. VDH says they should have given him a date for the second dose, but the pharmacy says it's not guaranteed since he was on a waiting list. I was brought in because they had that vial they didn't want to destroy, right. and I think I kind of threw a wrench into their process at CVS. That's an issue that needs to be addressed by CVS corporate, you know, and the Virginia Department of Health needs to address that too. VDH says that he should contact his vaccination location. CVS says that he should sign up for an appointment online. We're a few months away from your vote, choosing our next governor, and the race for the Republican ticket is packed with candidates, but it's unclear how they'll choose their nominee. 10 News reporter Tim Harfman is live near Liberty University. So, Tim, there appears to be some confusion today. Lindsay, that confusion involves the university because there were reports of GOP leaders saying that a convention here in Lynchburg is a done deal. However, LU says otherwise. As the race for governor shakes up, there's a shakeup on how Republicans will pick their nominee. Members of the GOP Central Committee claim they reached an agreement with Liberty University to hold a convention on May 8th while following COVID-19 guidelines. Officials say the event would be socially distanced, sort of a drive-by convention. But when 10 News reached out to Liberty about the plans, a spokesperson said a contract has not been finalized. The university released a statement Wednesday in part, quote, 
When asked by the Virginia GOP officials about the possibility of leasing portions of rental center lots off campus for a day to facilitate a COVID-19 plan for its convention, Liberty said it would consider it, provided that full rental cost for the use was paid. So far, Liberty has not agreed to any particular plan or contract. The university is making it clear parking lots and garages on the main campus are not an option, and they would rent space to the GOP as they do other organizations. Organizations. GOP candidates Glenn Youngkin and Senator Amanda Chase say regardless of the process, they want as many people involved as possible. My hope is that all Republicans will come together and sign up to be delegates. And there will be a process to sign up to be a delegate. At least that's what State Central tells us. It should be up to we the people to choose our Republican candidates for governor. I've been very consistent on that, no matter what process is chosen. In a statement to 10 News, GOP Chairman Rich Anderson writes, quote, we're talking with everyone involved and we'll have this straightened out very soon. Due to the governor's guidelines, there appears to be two uh two options, either uh, allow the Virginians to nominate, pick their nominee, or leave it up to the 72 members of the Central Committee. Live in Lynchburg, Tim Harfman, 10 News, working for you. Well, this Roanoke fire station beside me is now back open after more than uh, six years of planning and construction. City officials and fire EMS staff cut the ribbon for fire station number seven today. The city started that project back in 2014, working to preserve the history of the old station. This one is nearly twice the size of the last one, and it includes cancer prevention measures as a con and also accommodations for women. I think we've done a very good job of preserving the history and the character of the old station and bringing it forward in their station. So we're very proud of what the team has done, the committee has done, and it's now a very warm, comforting, welcoming fire station that Raleigh Court can enjoy for many years to come. The department's hoping to host an open house for community members once the pandemic's over. Giving a voice to the past and giving a woman back her name. How local historians are searching to identify an enslaved woman who made a rare pre-Civil War artifact. And you are looking at a live picture from our Martinsville New College Institute sky cam. Lots of sunshine today. Hardly a cloud in the sky. We'll let you know when this changes. We'll let you know when clouds return and when rain chances return coming up. Know your zone. Get a tailored forecast specific to where you are. Your local weather authority alerting you to the next weather maker moving into your zone, making it easier for you to plan ahead. Know your zone only from WSLS 10. Today marks five years since that violent tornado tore through Appomattox County, causing the destruction you see between us here. Yeah, it killed one person and hurt several others. 10 News reporter Jessica Jewell shows us how the hard hit community of Evergreen has recovered since then. A lot has changed in the last five years here in Evergreen. Far fewer trees, more homes now standing, and a new sense of community. But the road to recovery has not been easy, especially for those who lost the most. And of course, every day, you know, think about it, but sometimes it's more so. Nancy Harris remembers it like it was yesterday, driving home, barely able to see through dark, heavy rain. She says it was like a war zone. She wasn't able to get home initially because of all the downed trees, but when she did, she found her home and her husband gone. He was the only death, but seven people were hurt and more than 100 homes damaged. The EF3 tornado leveled homes to their foundation and rocked a community to its core. Evergreen is now back on its feet and Nancy back home thanks to a partnership between WSLS 10, God's Pit Crew and Spirit FM building her a new home right where the last one stood. Rebuilding her life, she says, is thanks to that sense of community, love and support along with her faith. It's brotherly love and God's, God is in the midst of all of it. And you know what? He's taking care of me and my family and all these others that have had the problem. So we're back. Evergreen is back. Nancy says it took three or four years for the community to rebuild, and she is so thankful for everyone who continues to support her. In Evergreen, I'm Jessica Jewell, 10 News, working for you. 
And five years later, I still think about that fateful day. I'll never forget the scenes from Evergreen, the noises of chainsaws, the helpful words spoken by the volunteers there to assist those who so desperately needed it. I will never forget talking to families who lost everything, their home, their car, their swing set. And no one, not one person said, woe is me. Instead, they were thanking my team and I for keeping them safe during the tornado. There are moments in your career where you change who you are a bit, and the days I spent Evergreen did just that. Those who survived the storm taught me what is truly important, and I am forever grateful to you for that. We've had 41 EF3 tornadoes on record in Virginia. The most recent was in Franklin County in 2019. Most have occurred in eastern parts of the Commonwealth. They are fairly rare for our state, but again, we've had certainly a couple of them here over the past three to five years. We had, of course, the Franklin County one. That one had maximum winds 159 miles per hour April the 19th of 2019. We had the uh, tornado that impacted Timberlake, went north into Elon. That happened on April the 15th, 2018, had maximum winds of 100. 50 miles per hour and we had the evergreen tornado that we just talked about with winds of up to 140 to 145 miles per hour. Thankfully, today was a, a quiet day for us. We had high pressure and control that brought us sunshine. We do have rain showers extending from New York into West Virginia and Kentucky. Not out of the realm of possibility for us to pick up on just a couple of showers here from Highland County South into Bland County as we head into the overnight tonight. But those I think will be pretty much few and far between. But midnight, one, two, three o'clock in the morning. Don't be surprised to perhaps have a, a couple of showers, maybe even a snow shower uh, into the Allegheny Highlands. As we head into Thursday, any clouds around are going to go away in the mountains and you folks Lynchburg and Southside are going to be mostly sunny all day long. Clouds then really arrive in earnest for us here as we head into Thursday night around three, four o'clock in the morning on Friday. We could have certainly a couple of snow showers, but those will be short lived as by 8 a.m. Friday we are dry again. Then another round of precipitation will impact us here later Friday afternoon into Friday evening and parts of the Highlands, New River Valley, Mountain Empire could see any rain showers changing over to a mix. Certainly some snow showers possible for areas in the mountains as we head Friday evening. Even a light accumulation possible in some spots. Now it's mainly rain for Lynchburg and Southside locations. Saturday, we're going to have another round of moisture move in. Most of the rain on Saturday will be in the morning, turning more intermittent in the afternoon. Sunday, we're going to have rounds of rain, and some of the rain we see on Sunday could be pretty heavy, and then the rain will start to let up here by Monday morning. By the afternoon on Monday, we will start to dry things out, but it's going to be a very wet go of it for us here as we head into Saturday, Sunday, into the first part of Monday. Could see one to three inches of rain, maybe isolated higher totals as we head again Friday through Monday. Little to no chance for freezing rain and localized flooding will need to be monitored very, very closely. Now, as we go into the weekend, that's where we're going to see the heaviest rain. Could see a half an inch to an inch of rain on Saturday. Could see an upwards of an inch to an inch and a half of rain on Sunday. And then the rain lets up as we head, say, towards lunchtime on Monday. But before that happens, could pick up an additional half an inch of rain Monday morning. 53 Hot Springs, 60 in Withville, 67 Roanoke, 64 as we speak in Martinsville. Tonight, skies are mostly clear for the most part. Again, a little more cloud cover towards the mountains, maybe even a couple of stray showers. Overnight lows 35 to 45 for tomorrow. We're not as warm, but we're still unseasonably warm, if that makes sense. Temperatures today, lower 70s, still above normal tomorrow with highs mainly in the 50s and lower 60s. Your extended forecast highs only in the 40s on Friday. Some of us may not get out of the 30s on Friday. Saturday, back into the middle 50s. We stay in the middle 50s Sunday, falling into the 40s Tuesday, rebounding into the 50s again by Wednesday. Wet off and on this weekend. We'll dry things out Monday afternoon and Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll see more sunshine. In news and notes, it was discovered today drinking was not a factor in Woods crash and no charges are expected. NBA playoffs set to begin at May 22nd and Richmond and Martinsville hopeful to welcome fans back this season after Governor Northam's announcement today. All right. <laughs> yeah, nice play. Nightly news is next. We'll see you at seven.